Hi folks, this is another first. Um, I've lectured in a classroom many, many times over the years, but this is the first time I've had myself recorded uh, in order to talk to you online. I'm going to try my best to uh, lecture for each chapter of the book that we're going to cover these first 16 weeks, that being 16 chapters. <clears throat> As you know, you find your textbook uh, under the connect uh, button on the left of your main screen. Let me preface this a little bit to tell you that my wife and I love animals and we have rescued many from the animal shelter here locally. So you may see on camera some of them wandering by. They love, especially the cats, uh, love to hang out where people are. The dogs will not be walking across my desk. <clears throat> I promise. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, on page one of your textbook, this is part one, organization of the body. Chapter One, Major Themes of Anatomy and Physiology. Obviously, this is a very beginning chapter of the study of anatomy and physiology. Some basic definitions first. Anatomy is the study of the structure of our bodies. Physiology is the study of the function of our body. These two are complementary and can should never really be entirely separated. Um, anatomy is the study of form. This, there are several ways of doing it, as you'll see there on page two. I don't want to go through each one separately, uh, but these are different ways that you can examine a live body. And then there are other ways that you can uh, learn from a cadaver. Okay, Physi um, 1.2 is the origin of the study of biomedical science. It talk talks about the Greek and Roman legacy, the birth of modern medicine, and that is not the 1900s or 2000s. The birth of modern medicine actually came about in the 1500s. A couple of names that you should probably know is William Harvey. Uh, he's the very, one of the first, uh, he was an Englishman and one of the first scientists to describe uh, the anatomy and physiology of our cardiovascular system. He's the first Western scientist to figure out uh, how blood circulates through the body. Robert Hooke is another Englishman in the early 1600s who developed the first um, oh, microscope. He and Antony van Leeuwenhoek from, from uh, a Dutch textile merchant who actually uh, invented a, sing, a very simple microscope. This made the study of anatomy uh, it just caused it to uh, burst forward because now we could see things that we couldn't see with our eyes. Section 1.3 deals with the overall scientific method. The scientific method uh, refers to a way of studying individual things and then making some assumptions about them, uh, leading to uh, more advanced uh, pieces of information. And that's, that's discussed in, on page seven. There are two different methods of doing this. One is the inductive method. Um, this is a way, it's a process of making numerous observations until then one feels confident in drawing some generalizations and making predictions. Another is the deductive method, or as your author calls it, 
the hypothetical deductive method. Um, a hypothesis is an educated speculation or a possible an, uh, a answer to a question. A good hypothesis is one that is consistent with what's already known and capable of being tested and proven by other people. Uh, one of the ways of doing this is using experiments. Uh, you will be doing some of this on a very basic level during one of your laboratory's assignments later. That's all covered on page seven. Um, all of these different studies then can eventually lead up to facts, laws, and theories. If something has been proven, well proven and documented again and again, then it is something that we can use whenever we study on into the future. And these are facts, laws, and theories. Chapter, or pages 10 and 11, it talks about, we are all primates, which is an order of the genus, or the group called mammals. Mammals are those that bear their infants alive. Um, some of the basic adaptations that we have made are the use of our hands, uh, using our fingers to pick up, um, walking upright. Um, although I've told many patients over the years that it was probably better if we could walk on all four our hands and feet, <clears throat> then we wouldn't have so many back problems, hip problems, osteoarthritis. But I suppose that will never happen. In section 1.5 that starts on page 11, uh, we'll talk about human structure. There are various different levels of human structure. We can either describe them from the simplest to the most complex or vice versa, from complex to the simplest. And these are very important things and names that I do want you uh, to understand. Uh, before we talk about that, according to your author, oops, I skipped a page, I'm sorry. <laughs> Your, your author describes the uh, hierarchy of structure from organs down to the simple, um, most simple pieces of anatomy. An organism is a single complete individual. This is uh, defined on page 12. Uh, it's composed of several different organ systems. An organ, an organ system rather, is a group of organs that all have a similar, uh, unique collective function. We have several different organ systems in our bodies. Uh, these including uh, the integumentary system, skeletal system, muscular system, and several more. An organ is a structure that is composed of two or more tissue types that work together to carry out some particular function. We, of course, as you well know, have many different organs scattered throughout our bodies. Going a little bit more simple, we get to the concept of a tissue. A tissue is a mass of similar cells and cell products that form a discrete region of an organ uh, and perform some specific function. There are really only four primary classes of tissue. Epithelial tissue, which is mostly in the skin, um, connective tissue, nervous tissue, and muscular tissue. The smallest units of an organism that carry out all the basic functions 
are called cells. Each of our cells is enclosed in a plasma membrane that's composed of both fats and proteins. Our cells almost exclusively have one nucleus, and that is the organelle uh, that contains the DNA. The name cytology is the study of cells and organelles, and we will cover that in later chapters. An organelle is a smaller yet <clears throat> microscopic structure within a cell. Uh, some of these are mitochondria, centrioles, lysosomes, and several others that we will uh, study in more detail later. Organelles and other cellular structures uh, are composed of molecules. The largest molecules, such as uh, proteins, fats, D DNA, and uh, sugars, um, are called macromolecules. A molecule, by definition, is a particle that is composed of at least two or more atoms. An atom is the smallest particle with unique chemical identities. It would certainly help if you have studied some chemistry at some point in the past. You, re you will remember seeing the uh, chart that covers all of the atoms and how they are related. Now, you should also keep in the back of your mind that even within human beings, there is a lot of anatomical variation. Then if you compare all of the different mammals, you can see that the, there's an unbelievable huge number, amount of variations. Chapter one, or section 1.6 talks about human function. There are four characteristics that each uh, part or each body must have uh, in order for it to have life. These four are organization, and that means the level of organization amongst all of the organs, organ systems, etc. cetera. Um, cellular composition that make up all of these tissues and organs. Metabolism. Metabolism, by you've heard that word certainly, is by define it is defined as the sum total, the total of all the different chemical changes that take place within the body. And then, in order for an organism to sense and react to different stimuli, it must be capable of having responsiveness and movement. Uh, some other concepts that I want you knowing. One is very important called, the word is homeostasis. And this is defined as the relatively stable internal conditions that a body must have in order to survive. This ability to maintain internal stability is called homeostasis. And again, we will study more of that later. We will also look at some very basic things about human development and growth. Uh, very late in the chapter, probably in the next uh, course, actually, in Biology 251, we will study reproduction uh, and then growth of uh, organisms. There are also some concepts called homeostasis and negative feedback. Um, the human body has, of course, a remarkable capacity for self-restoration. Even Hippocrates, way, way back in history, uh, commented about this that the body usually has some means uh, of returning its state to metabol or to equilibrium all by itself. 
this ability relates from homeostasis. Claude Bernard, a Frenchman in the mid-1800s, studied this in quite detail also. Now, there are two types of feedback loops that are apparent in the body. The most common is a, a negative feedback loop. <clears throat> Each fundamental mechanism in our body, such as blood pressure, uh, internal temperature, and others, um, has a set point at which it will function the best. And a fundamental mechanism that allows our bodies to keep the uh, variables at that set point is called negative feedback. When a process occurs that makes something change in the body, this uh, something must happen in order to change that uh, variable back to the set point. And this is called negative feedback. Uh, but it's or it by maintaining stability, this negative feedback is the key mechanism for maintaining health. There are many different feedback loops uh, that you will study. One of the best, mo several of the best examples will come when we study the endocrine system. Okay, going now to pages 16, 17, uh, you'll see more discussion of feedback loops. Um, there is also a concept called positive feedback. Um, this is much less common in the body, but there are a couple of examples, one being in childbirth. Okay, section 1.7 is discusses just a little bit about the language of medicine. We want you to know a little bit about some anatomical terminology to recognize some eponyms when you see them, uh, describe some basic medical terms, know what some common suffixes and prefixes are. Now, this is not a course in med for medical school, but some of you want to go on into nursing to become a physician's assistant or a dental assistant, perhaps even a physician or a dentist. You, of course, will study this in much, much more detail later. Section 1.7 uh, covers many of this in much more detail. I will let you know uh, that this will be covered very, very little in uh, any of the exams. Okay, now just some more general information. That's all for chapter one. It's very short, very basic. At the end of each chapter, every one, you will see a study guide. Uh, chapter one has uh, seven major subheadings for the different seven different subheadings within the chapter. It has one that's that's unique to chapter one, and this is 1.8, a review of major themes that will be discussed throughout the book. And these five core themes are cell theory, homeostasis, evolution, hierarchy of structure, and the complementary form and function of the body. I would like, I just sent each of you uh, a message that contained my thoughts about how to best study uh, this course. And one of them is to find this study guide and print it out. Uh, as you then go through your book, and again, I mentioned, unfortunately, uh, you can't yellow or pink highlight it because it's going to be on your computer screen or laptop screen, and you don't want to be trying to highlight on that. Um, 
However, I, I again went back to uh, McGraw Hill's uh, McGraw Hill's um, extra information that's in your course that can be found under connection uh, down on the left hand side of the screen. Um, ha, there's one of my cats making some noise right here. There's one over there. <laughs> We have many cats here. As I've told people, um, my elderly wife and I, I'm, I'm older than she is, we have more love in our house than probably in most other houses in the whole world because of our animals. They give us and we're able to give them what is called unconditionary love. 